was the 15th of August. The year was 1930. The place was Manjakui in Tanjavur district of Tamil Nadu, the southernmost state of India. The sun had risen in all splendor. The men were at work. The women were busy with their household chores. One little home wore a festive look. It was the home of Srimati Valambar and Sri Gopalayir. Srimati Valambar had given birth to a baby boy. The couple named him Natarajan. Natarajan was sent to the district board school to complete his formal education up to the SSLC level. But with the unfortunate demise of his father, when he was just eight years old, a significant portion of the family responsibility fell on his young shoulders. Natarajan continued with his education, all the while helping with the household chores. After his schooling, Natarajan left for Madras in search of a livelihood. Once at Madras, Natarajan made himself proficient in typewriting. He learnt journalism at the jobs he held in a weekly publication called Dharmika Hindu, run by Sri TK Jagannath Thacharya, and the Lens News Agency. Natarajan finally moved to Volkart Brothers, now known as Voltas. It was at Madras in the year 1952 that Natarajan met Swami Chinmayanandaji, a sannyasi with fire and inspiration. Inspired, he joined the Veda Patishala to learn chanting of the Vedas. Within a year, Natarajan was fully involved with the activities of the newly formed Chinmaya mission and was made its secretary. Natarajan had made up his mind to follow Swamiji. Natarajan, who all this while had been in search of a life that suited his spiritual quest, was given sannyasa by Swami Chinmayanandaji on Sivaratri in the year 1962. Natarajan, now ordained Swami Dayananda, moved to Rishikesh and stayed in a grass hut in Purani Jhadi. He had come to the banks of the Ganga in search of spiritual wisdom. Swami Dayananda studied the Brahma Sutra Bhashya under the guidance of Swami Tarananda Giriji. In the words of Swami Tarananda Giriji, Swami Dayananda was a very serious, attentive and alert student. Swami Dayananda stayed there for three years, a period of peace, tranquility and spiritual joy. Swami Chinmayanandaji's ill health did not permit him to carry on the work of the Chinmaya mission as envisioned by him. Swami Dayananda took up the task of helping his guru organize his mission and began conducting yajnas, that is, lectures on the Gita and the Upanishads and thus inspiring the masses. These activities kept Swami Dayananda occupied until 1972. The next two decades were spent in travelling across the globe, covering hundreds and thousands of miles, sharing the spiritual wisdom that he gained over the years by addressing large gatherings of people and through teaching resident courses in Vedanta and Samskritam to seekers of truth. Wherever he went, he won hearts and captured minds. People loved him for his vast knowledge of not only the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita, but also the religious texts and practices of other faiths, not to speak of modern literature. His penchant for speaking the truth plainly, without mincing words, made people to think of ideologies not thought hitherto. The ever-increasing number of disciples resulted into starting of the Arshavidya Gurukulam at Sailorsburg, USA in 1985 and at Ane Katti in Coimbatore district, India in the year 1990. Besides the one at Rishikesh, 
Swamiji lived at these Gurukulams for years, teaching Vedanta and Samskritam to the seekers of truth. A spiritual genius of commanding intellect and power, Pujya Swami Dayananda Saraswati has designed and taught seven residential courses on Vedanta and Samskritam to students across the world from different geographical, social, religious, cultural and economic backgrounds. His mounting compassion for the people of India inspired him to initiate a movement called the All India Movement for Seva, AIM for Seva, under the auspices of the Acharya Sabha, an apex body for Hindu Dharma that comprises of almost all the important Pithams and Mathams in the country. The vision of AIM for Seva is to become a movement of the people transforming and uniting the society through care that promotes self-sufficiency and maintains the dignity of those who are served. In this manner, AIM for SEVA's goal is to establish social, economic and cultural strength within the country by bridging the gap between mainstream society and people living in remote areas. Swamiji ceaselessly spreads the message of Sanatana Dharma around the world to inspire humankind towards the spiritual wisdom and culture of this great ancient land. Like a master craftsman, Swamiji uses all the tools of a great teacher to transform an individual into a man of wisdom. An erudite scholar, an eminent teacher, and a versatile genius, Swami Dayananda is a saint with a multifaceted personality. A disciplinarian and an incisive philosopher, Swami Dayananda has been gifted with a sensitivity to cultural diversity and his foresight has left even the intellectuals spellbound. His selfless love is visible in all his actions and his boundless compassion and generosity has helped many in distress. To see him unfold the vision of the Lord creates a desire to worship the Divine. To hear his resounding voice creates a desire to learn the Vedic mantras. To watch his composure creates a desire to have the same inner absorption. Simple and unassuming, with a radiance about him, Pujya Swami Dayananda Saraswati is indeed a personification of love, a sage of eternal wisdom and a global messenger of peace and prosperity.